Okay, now we're going to take our wing plate. We're going to stick it right up against F4 at the angle of the back of the saddle. And we're just parked back here uh, on your wing saddle on the fuselage. So just line that up. And then you're just going to take your pen and make a little bit of a mark right there. And that's where you know your wing plate's going to end. So what I'm do basically doing here, this is kind of optional. You don't have to really do this, but I'm going to do it because it just strengthens things up. I know that's going to be there. So now you can take the cutout that you had from your fuselage if you want, and uh, we're just going to cut a piece. I did about, a, I think, a half an inch. So we're going to take a half inch, measure a half inch down from the top, place a mark. I've already done this piece, so just showing you how to go about it. And a half inch up from this corner. And you can do a quarter inch if you want, but I'm doing a half inch. And then while the fuselage is flat, just take it and put your half inch mark down here right in this very corner. Lay the piece right on top of it and ignore the mark you made for your landing gear block. And you're going to take the other half inch mark and stick it right in this corner. And then just hold down tight and draw yourself a nice line. And there you have it. We'll cut this piece out and you'll have a half inch doubler for this part right here and we'll cut it to size in a second. So now you, I cut these out and you can just take this and trace it on to your other one if you want it's for the same size type thing. Just put it up there and trace it out and cut the next one out so now you'll have one for the other side as well. And then what we're going to use with these four, I'm going to stick them right in here and your landing gear block kind of showed you where it was going to be so just slide it up a little bit so you can see your mark and you're going to want to go straight up with this mark you're not going to want to follow the angle because the angle of your piece will be straight at that point that's my landing gear block you getting my templates mixed up so here's the wing plate block the wing plate block so now you can see that's the kind of curve I'm going to want to make so I'm just going to take my exacto once I push this up against here, and I'm going to cut that out because now your wing plate, well, make sure you're straight, and make sure you have the angle of your saddle, and then just cut the angle of your wing plate. Just make a little mark in it so you can cut through the fuselage, pull it off of there, and put that right here. And then when you glue that baby on, you got a nice reinforced doubler for your wing saddle and your landing gear or your wing plate block should fit right in there nicely. And we're not gluing the wing plate block in yet because I'm going to epoxy that. So I'm going to wait till the whole fuselage is built, but right now I'm just basically building around it uh, just to double up things. And this I will just CA glue down. That's all that we'll need. But the wing plate I'm going to want to epoxy and the landing gear I'm going to want to epoxy. So we're not going to install those yet. We're just using them for guides. Now on the back side, you're going to want to make this round piece of doubler. So the best way to do that is just take a flat piece. This is, I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm not sure what it is. This back ply piece of doubler here, or just balsa, whatever you want to use. It says ply wing mount, so I would go with ply because ply would be a little more durable. This is a known weak spot in this particular aircraft, so we're just going to strengthen it up before we put it together, or we won't have to worry about it being a weak spot. But anyway, take your ply. Stick it right up against the back of F4, flush there, flush to the top. And we're going to want to make this angle cut for F4A. So F4A, you can see the side of the fuselage that kind of cuts at this angle. So just lay your template down or your piece of plywood down. Lay F4 right on it, F4A, excuse me. And make sure it's kind of snug up against that and fall on the angle of the back of the wing saddle. And again, take your pen and just make a mark right there on the top of this doubler. And so now we know we just got to cut that corner off. And then everything should fit nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that corner off before I even cut anything else off. Just find me a straight edge. I've got more tools missing. And they're right here in front of me that I know what to do with. So just a couple of nice light scores. Now that'll sit right there. Push to the top. F4A comes right in. It's going to butt right up against that. 
and we'll be able to CA this piece right down. And then on the plan, you see some kind of a curve here. Basically, we're just strengthening up this area. So it can be anything. It doesn't have to be exactly like the template is. So we got it starting at the top of the former and just making some kind of a circle. Down to the bottom. So then we'll cut this part out. This piece is already cut. And then you can take this piece, trace it right onto the next side of it, and make a second one. And that'll be for the left side of the fuselage. Okay, I've cut that part of the template out uh, to where it was there. Now I'm just going to line it back up to the top of my former F4. Now I'm going to make two marks right at the very bottom of the fuselage here. I want it to be even with that. Now remember your F4A fits nice and snug right there. So you got a nice line right here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but there it is. It's nice and nice. So now I'm just going to take that bottom off after making the two marks. And I'm going to cut them right off. I'll probably take the marks right off. That way I'll be assured that I don't have to go back and just trim that light a little bit. So I don't want it to come up over the top. I just need it to reinforce the bottom. So now my F4A fits. And my template fits. So now I'm going to go ahead and trace that whole template right out on another piece. And I'll just line up the very bottom because I know I want that to be flat. Trace right around it with the angle and everything. So in case that wasn't on camera, I traced around the whole thing, lined up the very bottom flat with the bottom here. That way I know I got a nice flat bottom. And then I'll cut that part out and I'll have both of my templates for my rear doublers. So I'll even go ahead and mark that rear doubler. You can do left doubler or right though, I'll do left and right. And it doesn't matter what you write on it because it's not going to be seen. It's going to be inside the plane and wrapped behind Monaco. So we'll be good to go. I'm going to cut that out. And that should be good for, and remember to make your second one of these for your other side. You can even use the uh, other left half of the fuselage to get that measurement just like we did over here uh in the first part of it. You can do them both sides separately if you want to, but uh, one side should be good enough, should be close enough. And uh that's gonna be it. And I have them cut out my doublers. I got my right and my left side doubler. I'm just gonna take a piece of sandpaper and take a little bit of the rough edges off. Just some white sandpaper. Nothing major. That way I'll be sure there'll be no little lumps when I go to stick it on the plate there. It'll be nice and smooth and nice and clean. And basically when I try to make templates of the same thing is because you're trying to keep an equal balance of weight between the left side and the right side of the plane. It just helps a little bit better. It's not a huge big deal if it's a little bit off or, you know, but like I said, the truer the build, the truer the plane's going to fly. And that's what we're aiming for, the nicest flying plane possible. So now I got both my doublers on. Here's the right doubler. She's going to fit right in there. So I can go ahead and glue that in. Uh, now that I know, but just when you're gluing it in, make sure you use your template of your F4A. That's uh, going to sit there so when you go to glue F4A in after we get the model put together, it'll just fall right in place, no problem. You can just slap it right up against it. And uh, this is only going to require some CA glue. It's not going to require epoxy, but you can epoxy it. After I glue that doubler down on the right side, I'm going to put a little pressure on it and let that zap or CA, whatever you're using, seep up into the wood good. And I know by pressing down pretty hard on it, nice and flat, not too hard, you don't want to crack anything. Uh, that it's just going to really soak in nice and give me a nice solid bond and joint right there. That's also adding to this F form here back here. It's giving a little more support that way, a little extra glue around this edge. That's why I didn't glue this edge when we first did it because I knew I was going to be gluing it with the doubler there. So that meant it looked a nice clean spot, a nice clean place for the, the glue to absorb into. I got my right doubler on there and my F4A fits perfectly to the front part of the framing of the saddle. We're looking good there. I'm going to go ahead and, and now put my doubler on for the right side of the wing saddle. I'm just taking a good bead of zap here. And the nice thing about putting a doubler on is not only do you get the doubler on there for extra wood support, but the glue soaks in around it and really makes the whole saddle a lot nicer. So I just want to make sure that the bottom of the wing saddle is lined up pretty nice with this piece here. And remember that you put your uh, your wing plate in there. Make sure that fit in nicely. Mine still does, so I'm looking good. 